So hello, my name is Dr. Alison Vaughan, and here today I'm going to talk to you about technology, about animal learning, and about animal welfare. But more specifically, I'm here to talk to you about potty training cows. Now, when people hear about my research, they normally have a few questions. Questions like, why? <laughs> and how? And are you crazy? But this idea is not as crazy as it first sounds. In fact, I hope to prove to you today that potty training cows has the power to revolutionize the way we house dairy cattle and serve as a template for how we can use technology to meet other challenges to production animal welfare. Now, some of you in the audience may have picked up that, by my accent, I'm not from Canada. I uh, was born on a small island just off the northwest coast of Scotland. And it's a very rugged, it's a very rural environment. And if you'd asked me to picture a cow, well, this is what pops into my head. <laughs> I had a very romantic view of farming, and machinery did not feature heavily in that. In fact, I confess, I was pretty suspicious of technology when it came to farm animals. So six years ago, when I moved to Canada to study dairy cattle welfare, and I was faced with this, it was jarring. I've been studying animal welfare and behavior for about 12 years now, and this contrast and my reaction to it got me thinking about animal welfare, how we define it, and what it means to the animals themselves. Now, for most people, when we think of animal welfare, I should say, what is good welfare in the first place? So what is good welfare? Well, the short answer is it means different things to different people. For most of us, intuitively, we think of naturalness. We want an animal to have as natural a life as possible. Now, what does this mean? Well, there's one uh, study on Danish pig production and public's perceptions. And in that, participants from the public were asked to sort pictures of pigs into those with good welfare and those with poor welfare. Now, to quote one participant, being dirty is critical. Pigs should be dirty. The reason I put all the other pigs in that other pile was that they were just too clean. That means it's pure industrialized production. They were clean, and I don't like it. And that goes for the one with the curly tail, too. It was nice and curly, but too clean should have been dirty. Now, it's funny, because if I talk to my vet friends and I ask them what is good welfare, they're likely to talk about the health of the animal. We want to see an animal that's free of injury, free of disease, and probably clean. In the field of animal behavior and welfare, we often focus on the animal's subjective experience. What does that animal feel? What does it want? If I'm driving around on a sunny day and I see cows in a field, it looks nice, but if we ask the cow herself what she wants, actually, on balance, they often prefer to be inside, out of the hot sun, in a cool barn with food and water. And when we want to tuck our animals in at night, well, they'd often rather be outside, laying in that cool grass. In reality, good welfare needs to balance all of these approaches. We need to have happy, healthy animals that are free to perform natural behaviors. Dairy farmers have embraced technology to meet these needs. If you go to most dairy farms in the Fraser Valley, you'll often see it looks like a big mechanical brush, like something you'd find in a car wash. If you hang around for a minute or two, you're likely to see one of the girls go up, hit it to start it turning, and give herself a good all-over scratch and massage. <laughs> now, scratching is an important behavior for cows. It also helps keep them cleaner and reduces parasites. And if ever you have seen a cow use one of these, you don't need me to tell you that they really love it. So we also have automated milking systems. So rather than the farmer coming, taking the cow to be milked twice a day, they have milking units within the cow's pen. She can go whenever she wants to be milked, and that's how it happens. Now, this is good because the cow is able to be milked in a more natural schedule, but what's really interesting to me is that it changes our relationship with the cow, replacing her in, as an active participant in her own care. We wanted to embrace this approach and apply it to the challenge of keeping cows clean. Now, anyone who's ever been in a cow barn knows that cows produce a lot of manure. Cows produce, on average, around 15 liters of urine and 30 kilos of feces. That's per cow per day. So for your average BC farm, of, say, 100 cows, they're having to deal with 1,500 liters of urine 
3,000 kilos of feces every single day. Now, that is a lot of mess to clean up. <laughs> and because of this, barns are often designed to make removing manure easier. We want to keep the cows out of the manure. But some of these designs and structures to make removing manure easier can compromise the cow's comfort and may also restrict her behavioral freedom. So what if we could potty train cows? Potty trained cows would mean cows, uh, barns that are designed around cows, not manure. It would mean reduced ammonia emissions. It would mean less cost and labor for the farmer, and it would mean a better environment for the cows. But excitingly, it would also uh, provide cognitive enrichment for the cow. Animals love to learn, and I know cows don't have a reputation for being very smart, but that could not be more wrong. I'd like to share with you a video from the UBC's Animal Welfare Program, which I hope shows you how much they enjoy learning. So this calf has to touch the starter button on the right. This changes the color of the screen. If it's a red screen, she touches it, and she gets her milk. If it's a white screen, however, she has to resist that temptation. <laughs> So, they're not so stupid after all. It's okay, she gets another red screen. So cool, cows are smart. But does that mean they can be toilet trained? Well, truth be told, there wasn't a whole lot of research on this. <laughs> so we set out to see if it could work. We conducted what we call a proof of principle experiment. We wanted just to see if cows could learn to associate a specific location with this behavior. In this case, we chose urination because it's easier to artificially stimulate. So we'd bring our calves individually, we'd pop them in their potty stall, and we'd give them a diuretic, which just meant they would urinate quicker so they didn't have to wait in there too long. As soon as they urinated, we released them, they got their milk reward. The following day would be a test day. On the test days, we just put the calf in the stall, and we waited to see what would happen. If they urinated, fantastic. We rang the little bell, we released them, they got their milk. If they failed to urinate, well, too bad. They exited into a little timeout pen, and the next day they had another training day. So, did it work? This is one of our girls. You'll see at the beginning, she's really trying to pee. It's a bit like being at the doctor's when you have to pee in a cup. Sometimes you need a minute or two. This girl's pedigree name is UBC Cage Star, and boy, did she live up to that name. She needed just one 15-minute training session. She's about to do her trick here. She urinates, and she goes out to get her award. So this calf, as I said, she just took one 15-minute training session. Every single day after that, we popped her in that stall and she peed. And actually, five out of the six cows we trained urinated more than their controls. And this actually got me to thinking whether there may be something to a name, because the one animal who did not learn, well, her pedigree name was UBC Cage Idiot. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So this was all very exciting. We proved that they can do it. But realistically, we don't expect farmers to go around training every single one of their cows individually. It's just not practical. So I turned to technology. Now, as I said, I'm not really that into technology, so I teamed up with UBC's engineering physics department and an amazing student called John Harvey. <laughs> and together, we came up with this. This is the interactive camera urination defecation training program or as we like to call it, the ICUP. <laughs> <laughs> so this unit is really for detecting urination defecation. It's just that piece of the puzzle. It would be mounted above the calves' pen, and it consists of two cameras. We have a visible light camera and a thermal camera. I'll show you a bit of what the visible light camera allows us to do. So with this program, we throw out anything that isn't black or white, we clump together the black and white blobs to make this sort of size of a calf, and it allows us to track individual animals as they move around the pen. So we know who they are, 
we know where they are. With the thermal cameras, we're able to refine that a bit because the head of a calf is a little warmer than the rest of their body, so we can sort of see what direction they're going in. And the cool thing with the thermal camera is, because the inside of a cow is a lot hotter than the outside, when they urinate or defecate, it shows up a bright spot. We look at whose bottom is closest, and we assign it to them. So we're just in the process of validating this now. The next step will be to give feedback to the calf, to let them know, hey, you got it right, and let them go and claim their rewards. I really believe it's just a matter of time before we have a fully automated potty training cow system that will allow us to train and collect automatically, reducing emissions, reducing labor, and improving lives for cows. Technology doesn't have to be scary. And I think the way in which we're using technology can change. It doesn't just have to be for automating things that we already do. It can be for approaching a problem in a whole new way. I really believe that technology and out-of-the-box thinking hold the key to restoring the balance in our relationship with the animals that produce our food. And I think that's something we all have a moral responsibility to care about. Thank you. <laughs>